A freaky eater is someone who takes an eating habit to the extreme. Daniel is obsessed with raw meat. Uh, it goes down real smooth, you know? He loves the taste and texture and completely disregards the risks. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. I just really don't want my brother to end up dying from that one bad piece of meat. With one week of intense therapy, can specialists Mike Dow and JJ Virgin help Daniel let go of his dangerous obsession? What he is doing has real consequences. Before it's too late, your first sign could be death, and it's not a nice death. Twenty-nine-year-old Daniel has a typical varied diet, except for one freaky habit. Daniel has been obsessed with raw meat for the past six years. He feeds his habit four times a week in pound after pound of raw beef, eating whole steaks pulled right from the packaging. Mm. Even raw chicken. It isn't really normal for people to have the eating habits that Daniel does. Every year, 76 million people contract foodborne illnesses. Of these people, 375,000 are hospitalized, and approximately 5,000 die. I'm really concerned that Daniel doesn't care that one day this could lead to death. In fact, Daniel scoffs at the thought of getting sick. It's absolutely mm. worth it to eat raw meat, even though there's consequences. Consequences are minor. I like to pull it. I like to see the muscles. There's no real reason behind it besides I like the taste and texture. It's like butter. Daniel's love of raw food started when he was a child. When we were kids, Daniel would always eat raw biscuit dough and pancake batter. It was one of many things that set Daniel apart in a strict military household. Well, Daniel has always just been a little bit different, particularly when it came to writing poems, stories, fiction. My father is always pushing me, wanting better, and kind of stressing accomplishments and goals and discipline. And I feel like I'm kind of unique and different from other people. While Daniel's brother followed in their father's footsteps by joining the military, Daniel chose to pursue a degree in liberal arts instead a decision not embraced by his family. My family didn't really support me in writing poetry. They just never really cared much, I guess. Once he left the strict confines of his parents' house, Daniel began experimenting with more raw foods. It was just a relaxing moment. One of those quiet things where you do it on your own and you're like, wow, this was nice. Soon, Daniel was indulging his raw meat cravings several times a week, but he only shared his secret with his brother. I thought it was just something he was trying out, but then it started progressing to three or four times a week, and that's when I really started to get concerned. After graduation, Daniel took a job as a government analyst and finally gained some respect from his family. It wasn't rewarding. I was dying a little every day. Depressed. Daniel eventually quit his job to pursue writing full time. I want to make some kind of a difference in the world, you know? That's why I like the whole creative angle. You can usually help people by doing what you're best at, I think. Daniel now spends his time doing what he loves most, writing, working out, and searching for inexpensive ways to feed his obsession. I like bargains, and I always look for the cheapest cut. I don't think he does any type of preparation to it, washing it whatsoever. Horrified by the risks Daniel is taking, his brother Bryant has begged him to give up raw meat. Daniel disregards any health advice he gets regarding the raw meat that he consumes. Some products may contain bacteria that could cause illness if the product is cooked improperly. Whatever. I mean, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. I have never gotten sick from eating raw meat, ever. And I've been doing it for six years now. Mm. I just really don't want my brother to end up dying from that one bad piece of meat. It's gonna happen sooner or later. With nowhere else to turn, Bryant has asked Freaky Eater specialists JJ Virgin and Dr. Mike Dow to intervene. 
I'm JJ Virgin, and I'm a board-certified nutrition specialist. My name is Dr. Mike Dow. I'm a licensed psychotherapist specializing in eating disorders and addictive behaviors. Bryant has asked them to meet him at Daniel's gym in the hopes that a surprise intervention will inspire Daniel to change. So tell us a little bit about why you're here. I'm kind of concerned about my brother's eating habits. He likes to consume massive quantities of raw meat. Is he aware of the health consequences of eating raw meat? He's been told a lot. I just think he doesn't care. Daniel's raw meat eating habit is incredibly dangerous. The parasites, the bacteria, sooner or later, if you eat raw meat, you're going to get sick. One of the things I'm also concerned about is that, you know, he doesn't have a stable job, so he's buying whatever meat he can get, basically, so it might not be the highest quality, so. You could eat carpaccio, you could eat steak tartare, if you're choosing very high-quality meats prepared by professional chefs. But Daniel is going and buying the manager's special, the cheapest, oldest meat. Why don't we go meet him? OK, let's All do right. it. We're going to go talk to Daniel. We're going to confront him about his behaviors. We're going to figure out if he is willing to accept our help. Daniel has a disturbing obsession with raw meat that he indulges several times a week. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. His brother Bryant is hoping that a week of intense therapy with psychotherapist Dr. Dow and nutritionist JJ Virgin will convince Daniel to change. Daniel, hi there. Uh, what's up? <laughs> I'm Dr. Mike Dow. Mike Dow. Nice Pleasure. to meet you. JJ Virgin. Good Pleasure. to meet you. Pleasure. I'm just going through my routine, doing my usual thing, and now here comes my brother with these like doctors, and just totally took me by surprise. Dude, what's going on? The reason these people are here is because I called them about how you like to eat raw meat. I don't know if you really know how much this can affect your health, so they want to help you. Oh, OK, but I don't think I need help. I really do hope that they can just strike some chord with Daniel, but I know it's going to be hard. So I'm hearing that you're not convinced at all that this could be dangerous to you. That's absolutely right. You're making yeah. a joke of all of this that could kill you. What's up with that? I don't think it's that big of a deal. Driving's more dangerous, I think. Well, you know, things are a decision. You wouldn't drive on the wrong side of the street. No. And I hear a lot of these rationalizations, and all the rationalizations are geared towards you continuing to eat raw meat. That is correct. Absolutely. So it sounds like what you need is some information. Would you be willing to come with us so we can show you a few things and possibly change your mind? All right, but you got a big chore ahead of you, I'll just say that. I feel like they're talking down to me. It felt like a fight with me against three people. They were attacking me, not just my eating habits. Thank you. Since Daniel refuses to acknowledge the risks of eating raw meat, Dr. Dow and JJ want to introduce him to someone who can show him the danger he is facing. My name is Dr. Mike Carriger. I'm a board-certified family medicine physician. Raw beef is covered with microscopic organisms, viruses, as well as parasites. Okay. okay. Uh, they're not visible to the human eye, but nonetheless, they're there. Mm -hmm. Your first sign of eating a parasite or a virus or a bacteria could be death, and it's not a nice death. I haven't died yet. If we showed you evidence, would that help you to make some changes in your life? I don't know, I like really like it and I really don't want to change. I see this cavalier attitude, this defensiveness. Daniel needs to put down his denial and accept that what he is doing has real consequences. To determine exactly what these consequences entail, Dr. Carriger wants to run some tests on one of Daniel's favorite foods. This is some ground chopped meat which we got from your refrigerator. The test tab will reveal if E. coli is present in the ground beef. E. coli is incredibly dangerous. It starts with stomach cramps, diarrhea, headaches, fever, bloody stools, but then it can quickly progress to organ failure and death. While Daniel hasn't experienced the onset of these side effects yet, it doesn't mean they aren't in his future. If we look at the tip of the test strips, if there's any discoloration at all, it means there's a positive test. All right. So looks like our E. coli here has changed in color. So that's positive E. coli on the ground beef from your refrigerator, living on your chopped meat. 
The E. coli test they did came up positive, but I don't think it's a real biggie because I think my body's uh, naturally made to, to fight this type of thing. Is there such a thing as the body building up immunity? No. Actually, you're putting yourself at higher risk for disease the more raw meat that you eat. The easiest way to prevent oneself from being infected with these bacteria is cooking the meat adequately. One of the things that's going to make this more real for you is to see what's really going on inside your body. We're going to take a stool sample, send it off to the lab, and see exactly just what's going on inside your gastrointestinal tract. It's very likely that Daniel could have a parasite and not even know it. A day after he first met with Freak Eater specialists, Daniel is still refusing to acknowledge the risks associated with eating raw meat. I haven't died yet. So Dr. Dow wants to speak with him one-on-one -on -one to see if he can uncover why Daniel adopted his habit in the first place, starting with his family. Tell me about your dad. He's authoritative. He's a military man, just like my grandpa was also a military man. It sounds like you took a very different path than the rest of the men in your family. That's true. How was that for you growing up or when you realized that you did not want to go on that path? I feel like I haven't fulfilled expectations yet. I, f I still feel kind of disappointed. Daniel, you talk about yourself with this lens of, I'm not good enough. Yeah, that's right. It sounds like you really have this need of wanting to figure out who you are, and you want to actually live the life that is Daniel, not anybody else. Yeah. What did you need from your dad that you didn't get? More support for uh, self exploration, mm -hmm. I would say. More support of the arts. Mm. Maybe I have some issues about validation from my dad and uh, kind of meeting expectations in life. Tell me what being a man means to you in your life, Daniel. It means being proud of what I'm doing and uh, making a difference. If you had all those things in your life, what do you think might happen to eating raw meat? I wouldn't think about it as much anymore. That was the first time where I realized that uh, eating raw meat, it was about more than just food. He kind of opened that up to me. Thank you for being so honest with me today. Well, thanks for asking the good questions. And... My pleasure. Daniel's raw meat eating is about him not feeling good enough. He doesn't feel very supported in his family. The more we can find things to add to his life or he can get these emotional needs met, the less he will feel the compulsion to engage in these risky behaviors. Daniel may have a better understanding of why he's been eating raw meat, but he is still skeptical as to why he should give it up. JJ hopes the results of his lab tests will change his mind. You ready? Yes. I have no idea what's going on, but in the back of my mind, I'm kind of digging in for another fight. Uh, you do have a parasite. Just the word parasites is kind of strong, you know, and it stood out there. We're not sure whether it is something that's, you know, attaching into your small intestinal wall and actually causing problems. Daniel needs to take these tests and go back and see his doctor. He needs to deal with this parasite. We watch for side effects here. We watch for any kind of diarrhea, nausea, headaches, fever. Daniel's attitude did a 180 degree shift as we started to review his test results, and it all became very real to him. One more thing that's of interest on this test, rotting protein that hasn't digested sitting in your gut. Now, if you tell me that I'm just going to keep eating raw meat, I'm going to tell you, you'll probably start gaining fat more and more because that's a definite thing that it does. I know it makes me seem shallow, but that is an important part of the argument about the fat and all that. What do you want to look like? I want to be a god on Earth. It would never work if we didn't fix this. OK. The turning point came when JJ told me how eliminating this could improve my life physically. So that means that the raw meat's going. If it, if, like, yes, let's do it. It just shows you what a big deal vanity is. You know, I sat there and showed Daniel how his raw meat diet could kill him, and he really didn't care. But when I tied it to how he could get a six-pack, boom, he's all in.
determined to take control of his own life and forget the expectations of his family, Daniel has agreed to give up his dangerous raw meat habit. There's a very simple fix to Daniel's problem. He just needs to cook his food. So the first morning, he prepares himself a cooked breakfast. I've set my mind now to eating healthy and cooking my food and doing things right. It's hard to kick a habit. He's also adopted a new fitness regime to get the adrenaline rush that he used to get from raw meat. I feel healthy. After three full days without raw meat, Daniel is already noticing a physical difference. What's making me stay strong is looking in the mirror at my stomach and watching it get flatter. I'm going to hang in there. I'm not thinking about going back to eating raw meat because uh, I've got my eyes on the prize. Here's an apron for you. Excellent. Inspired by his session with Dr. Dow, on the fourth day, Daniel decides to focus less on himself and more on helping others. At this point, what I want Daniel to add to his life are behaviors where he feels like his life has meaning. So he volunteers at a local soup kitchen. How are you doing? Oh, one day at a time. I feel that. I really like being around people and helping people, and I found that really rewarding. It's more deep-seated and not as temporary as eating raw food was. Good morning. Helping other people is definitely a lot healthier than uh, consuming raw food. But while volunteering has helped Daniel feel better about himself, it is not enough to keep the cravings at bay. By the fifth day, it gets to be too much. I have that craving. I want some meat. When he gets home, the familiar look and smell are all too enticing. My mouth just started watering, looking at this thing. I'm not. It was just tough, chewy, and disappointing. And I wanted it to taste good. I really did, but it just didn't. So I'm cutting through the meat, and I look over, and there's the other half of the meat I bought sitting raw. It's nice and red. It'd be so easy to just go over there and sprinkle a little salt on it. But I just shut myself off from it and just kept sawing through the thing I had in front of me. On day seven, Dr. Dow asks both Daniel and his brother to join him for one final exercise. He wants to make sure Daniel experiences both support and acceptance from his brother so that he can truly accept himself. Welcome to paintball. Brian is in the military and Daniel is not. And in a lot of ways, Daniel feels like he's not good enough. Let's do it. I'm Let's ready. get suited up. I wanted to put them on the same team so that instead of trying to figure out who's better, they could actually feel like brothers. Having that will allow Daniel to go to the next step where he fully accepts and approves of himself. Your brother and me were on your team. Good. That's the good news. The bad news is we are playing against three professional paintballers. The game we're playing is capture the flag. When you're on the field, it's one shot, one hit. If you are hit, you're out at that point. Game will be live in three, two, one. Game on! The girl's right there. She's got the flag. Oh. I think I hit her. Ah. All right, I'll provide cover. You run over there. The flag is right there, OK? All right, you OK? okay. Yeah. I saw Bryant giving Daniel support and motivation. So you can do this, and this is our plan. That was the kind of support I wanted to see. You got me? Yeah. Go, go. Go, Danny. Game over. <laughs> Green team wins. All right, nice work, Danny. Well nice done. Work. Nice work. Feeling good? Yeah. It was like a total adrenaline rush. My brother Bryant and I definitely bonded over this experience. We got one last goodbye lunch for the two of you. The final surprise for Daniel and Bryant is a meal together with cooked steak. Having my brother here is great, because I think it takes someone really close to me to be able to get me to make a change. Dang, I don't want to say it, but it feels a little overdone. So do you still have the urge to eat raw meat? 
a little bit. I was always not wanting to change my behavior, but the doctors came and I think it's important. We only want what's best for you, man. We're just trying to keep us all alive. That's, a bit, that's about it, man. Now that I've been through all of this with uh, JJ and Dr. Dow and my brother and everybody, I'm not gonna eat raw meat anymore. How's the food? Hey, Dr. Dow. The best fact is I'm sharing it with my brother here, not necessarily the meat, but right. you know, it's the experience of the food, uh, which maybe is already an improvement. I'm talking more about the experience and not the food itself. And you're creating a positive association. Now it's gonna be up to you. That's always the hardest part. Daniel was living dangerously because he didn't feel accepted by his family. But with the help of the experts and his brother, he now feels supported in his life and no longer needs raw meat. All right, man. Thanks, man. Thanks for coming out.